and how to overload in python how to overload operators so what are the equivalent methods that you may have to define within the python class while overloading that we will see with the example followed by the concepts or oop concepts i'll share my screen Friends, uh, I will consider one example of uh, the time class which contains attributes like hours, minutes and seconds. Let us see how to perform various operations on time class. Look at the class definition. See, look at here, whatever I will share here. So the shaded, all this shaded portion is, yes, yes, up to here it is class definition look at here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so the okay there is a class called time and it has three attributes hours minutes and seconds and it has nine methods defined inside this now let us see in what sequence it will call and when it will call okay to explain that let us start from the main code main code starts from here so this is the comment main code starts from here let us see what what we are doing students now i'll ask you the questions you, you should tell me okay which method will be called when the statement executes you need to tell me which method which method will be called and why it will be called I'll ask you one by one. So the first statement we are creating one time object by name T1. Now tell me which is the method that will be called. Students. Manjunath. Manjunath H. Yes, sir. Yeah, tell me now which method will be called. What is this? What is this statement? For time. What this statement will do? So printing the time, I mean, uh, 3 comma 40, I mean, 3 hours for not printing man, not printing. What is this? Creating the object T1 and passing yes, the argument. So which method will be called? Init method will be called double underscore init double underscore. Check where it is. So here it is. The, double underscore in it double underscore what is this self represents self represents what t1 self represents t1 and you are passing default values time is equal to say these are the default values self dot hour is equal to h self dot minute is equal to m self dot seconds is equal to yes now also object t2 will be created and it will call init method then now what happens tell me here in this statement which method will be called guria kumari yes sir Tell me which method will be called in this print statement. If you execute this print statement, which method will be called? Uh, once again, sir. Tell me what will happen when this print statement executes? Which method will be called? See, we are making an attempt to print the object. See, if it is a normal variable value, it would have print. So what is the value of T1? But here T1 is the object, isn't it? So therefore, to print the object in a string format, we need to call double, double underscore str double underscore. So look at here where it is. Double underscore str. Uh, here it is. str method will be called. What this self represents? This self represents t1 okay see look at here 
this here t1 is the object and here this self represents t1 it will return okay percentage t, what is this hours minutes and seconds self dot hour self dot minute self dot second look at here t1 3 hours 40 minutes why it is 3 hours 40 minutes because we are passing 3 the first attribute is hours second attribute is attribute is minutes third one is seconds now what happens when t1 executes it will call init so these are the default values so self dot hours is equal to what are this 345 isn't it self dot hours is equal to 3 self dot minutes is equal to 40 and we are not passing third parameter so it will take default value that is self dot seconds is equal to 0 so that is why when you display this print statement t1 is it will display like this t1 is 3 hours 40 minutes 0 seconds now you got this what is this 3 and 40 this 3 and 40 are nothing but hours and minutes and we are not sending the third parameter hence it will consider third parameter default value that is default value is 0 okay so this is the demonstration of default default argument values similarly now when you train when you are trying to print the value of the object t2 so now look at here as part of t2 what are the values passed 5 hours 45 minutes and 0 seconds why 0 seconds it will call in it so hours is we are passing minutes also we are passing and third parameter we are not passing hence it will take the default value seconds is equal to 0 look at here 5 hours 45 minutes and 0 seconds so now when you print t2 it will call str method so here it will display here it will display so in what format it will display it will display in this format string format look at here how it is displaying the result t2 is 5 hours 45 minutes and 0 seconds look at here after each value we are inserting the colon we are inserting the colon then after that write uh, print whether t1 is same as t2 that is comparison t1 is equal to equal to t2 now tell me which method will be called i'll call some name bhavisha are you there yes sir yeah bhavisha tell me now which method will be called when the print statement executes here which which statement will be called sir eq eq why because t1 and t2 are objects so look at here the comment call for double underscore eq double underscore so let us see where it is defined yes here it is defined what is self and t see self is t1 and t is t2 this is nothing but t1 comma t2 why self represents t1 because that is the first argument so that is a one which is in t1 is a method t1 is the object which is invoking t2 okay so the equivalent statement for this in c++ is t1 dot operator of operator equal to equal to of t2 do you remember that syntax just i'll type it here t1 dot operator double equal to of t2 so like this in uh, c++ plus plus we are calling do you remember this now here which is the object invoking the method t1 is the object invoking the overloaded function so similarly here t1 is the object which is invoking the overloaded method hence here hence here self is represented by using t1 and this second argument represents t2 therefore here look at here how to do the 
validation return self dot hours equal to equal to t dot hour and self dot minute is equal to equal to t dot minute and self dot second is equal to equal to t dot second that means you check whether t1 dot hour is equal to equal to t2 dot hour and t1 dot minute is equal to equal to t2 dot minute and t1 dot second is equal to equal to t2 dot second okay now here in between we have the and operation if all these conditions become true then return true or else return false look at here what is the output what is the output false whether t1 is same as t2 false that means it is very clear that see this is 3 hours 40 seconds and this is 5 hours sorry 3 hours 40 minutes and here it is 5 hours 45 minutes which are not at all same so therefore this print statement is resulting in false okay so now we are done up to we are done up to here now t3 is equal to t1 plus t2 so what we are doing here we are trying to add two dates two time objects we are trying to add two time objects t1 and t2 and we are making an attempt to store the result in object t3 now this will make a call to look at here double underscore add double underscore we we'll make a call to double underscore add double underscore let us see where it is here it is double underscore add double underscore so this represents t1 this is t1 and this is t2 okay now using is instance we are checking whether t belongs to time okay whether t belongs to time return self dot add time okay if this becomes true if t is an object of time then then only you do that means we are doing validation then you call add time add time of t where it is defined here it is defined similarly okay so in case if this becomes true then return self dot increment of t so what is that self dot increment of t look at here this is used to increment the seconds is equal to self dot time uh, what is that two underscore int time to increment where it is yes okay see here we have separate methods while adding the time see while adding the time if you want to say for example after 59 minutes hour is to be incremented similarly after 59 seconds the minutes has to be incremented so that's like that to increment minutes we have written this and to increment hours so hours and minutes we have written these these functions we have written these functions so this will make a call to double under sorry t3 this will make a call to str because we are printing object t3 and here this will make a call to double underscore add double underscore so here this will make a call to double underscore str double underscore and here this will make a call to r add students i'll tell you why this r add see this is different from this method okay there is explanation given for this that i'll tell you so what is this add right add because here the say here the first 
argument is not the object it is the number that means you are making an attempt to add a number okay see here the invoking object is t1 but here in the left side you have 130 sorry the first argument 130 that's a numeric value after that you have temp t1 so for that purpose for that purpose we need to call a different method okay and that method is called as r add r r add look at here where it is r add see here what is the first argument first argument is 130 okay look at here this statement this is first argument is 130 that is considered as self and second argument is what is that t1 here that is considered as t here that is considered as t okay then return self dot double underscore add double underscore that is now here this self represents the value what is that 130 and this t represents t1 so in turn this will call add method this will call this method add underscore t okay students like that we need to understand when we have to use add method and when you have we have to use r add r add means when you are adding number plus object then we have to use r add when you are adding object plus object or object plus number then we can use just add method see this is the interview question keep in your mind when okay when you can use add method and when we can use r add method you can use our add method only when you are ma making an attempt to add number plus object. Number plus object. So next, T6 is equal to sum of all these objects. T2, T1, T2, T3, and T4. So we are calling a method sum. Look where sum is there. Where is the sum? where it is somewhere it's missing mm -hmm. one minute i'll tell you what what is happening in case of some See the sum internally calls the sum method internally. See that's the inbuilt method. See students, do you remember I was telling while declaring the local variables, you should not use the keyword, you should not use the word sum. Why? Because it's a keyword. That means it's the inbuilt method, which internally, when the sum is applied for objects, it will call internally double underscore add double underscore. Okay. And when you specify the numbers here, like 10, 20, 30, directly it will add and it will give you the result. Say for example, um, if you apply sum of 10, 20, 30, it will give 60 as the result. But when you specify objects as the parameters, then internally it will call add method. That is double underscore add double underscore. Then, then so that add method is defined here so where yes yes there's add method yeah here it is okay then here it will add all the objects by taking two at a time say for example so how it will add i'll tell you first it will add t1 and t2 okay then that you will get some result okay plus t3 will be added then you will get some result plus t4 will be added okay like that it will add all these objects and finally the result will be stored in t6 okay finally the result will be 
stored in T6. Then when you print the contents of T6, it will call str method. So str method, yes, str. It will call str method. Oh, it's not displaying underscore symbol. It's not displaying underscore symbol. I am typing. No, it is not displaying. Okay, keyboard, keyboard. Uh, okay, that symbol is not getting displayed. Okay, underscore. Students like this, we need to understand how the operator overloading will will work. So yesterday I showed you one table. Do you remember? Yesterday, which is the table? Yeah, this is the table. See, if you look at this table, okay, when you are when you are overloading plus operator, this is the method it, which will be called. Similarly, when you are overloading minus operator, it will call sub. When you are overloading asterisk, it will call multiple. That is mul. When you are overloading division, it will call true div. Like that, you need to remember these methods. Okay, then don't forget len and str, they are not functions, instead, they are operators. Len is an operator and str is an operator, but it will work like a function. Students, anything you want to ask about uh, operator overloading? Hello? Students, anything you want to ask about operator overloading? One compulsory question will be there. Uh, 8 to 10 marks. Then, Sir, yeah. I didn't understand that uh, number plus object. Uh, number plus object. Yes, here it is, isn't it? See, when it is object plus number, there is no confusion. Why? Because T is the invoking object, isn't it? T is the object which is invoking operator overloaded function. So it will call add method. Okay. So similarly, see, see, one minute I'll tell you. See, when it is object, I'll tell you there are three scenarios. I'll tell you. You just listen. Then at the end, you ask me the question. See, there are three scenarios. So one scenario is object plus object. So it is equivalent to like this T1 dot operator equal to equal to of t2 so this is our c plus plus syntax isn't it so this is not the python syntax this is c plus plus syntax just for your understanding so just i told you internally it will be understood like this similarly this is one scenario where it will call add method second scenario is adding object plus number when you add object plus number okay so that equivalent uh, thing is t1 dot operator equal to equal to sorry equal to equal to of what is the value you are passing 75 okay that is clear like this it will understand but what happens But what happens when it is the third scenario? First, you have a number, then you have an object. Then I cannot call 130 as the object. I cannot write so 130 dot operator of equal to, uh, sorry plus plus of plus plus of even. So that is that is not wrong. So now if you want to consider. 130 as the argument then you have to use r add method r add method look at here the implementation of r add method see here this represents 130 which is the number then this represents t1 object 
then return in turn now this will call add method okay that means that means when you are adding number plus object first it will call or add method in turn or add method will call add method okay that is the flow the R, R add method can convert this 130 into object. After converting this 130 into object, then it will call add method. That add method will do actual operation of adding this 130 to the object T1. Okay, what this 130 represents? Uh, this 130 represents actually hours. It will be in minutes and it will convert It will be in minutes and it will convert. Yeah, then it will convert into minutes and say minutes. So see, uh, for one hour it is 60 minutes. Then uh, how to convert 130 hours into minutes like that? So like that. So for that we have uh, we have the logic here. For those conversions we have the methods here. Okay. So that for th for that for that conversion. So we have written the appropriate code which will convert that hours into minutes. So the to, the main thing that you need to understand how this will work. One thirty plus t one. One thirty is the number and t one is the object. So it will call our add method. In turn, our add method will convert 130 into object, then it will call add method. So that is a thing, that is a flow. See in the interview, the question may be like this, whether our add can directly perform the addition of these two, these two number and object. The answer is no, it cannot directly perform. Since it cannot directly perform, it will call add method. So before calling the add method, it will make sure that 130 is been converted into object and that will be considered as self. Self means what? Just like uh, this pointer in C++. Isn't it? In C++, we have this pointer, which represents the current object, which is invoking the method. Like that, here we have, instead of this pointer, we have self pointer here. Manjanath, is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah, anything else? Unit method. See here, and we have used one more method. Time to int is used to convert a time object, that is hours, minutes, and seconds, into single integer representing time in number of seconds. int to time is written to convert the argument seconds into time object in terms of hours minutes and seconds int to time converts seconds into hours minutes and seconds the built-in method division modulo that is div mod gives the quotient as well as the reminder after dividing first argument by second argument given to it okay see the complete explanation is being given so whatever the this logic is there it's complete explanation is given in this so that okay so you can understand so the each and every statement after this okay debugging okay debugging after that we have general oops concepts so let us see the debugging we have seen earlier has attribute method can be used to check whether an object has a particular attribute or not say for example yeah if i say time object is having a uh, ten, uh, hours, minutes, and seconds. If you want to check whether second belongs to time object of time object or not, then if you put has attribute of 
seconds then it returns true that true indicates yes that is an attribute of time isn't it like that there is one more way of doing it using a method called where's the same thing that can be done in another way by using another method called where's this method maps attribute names and their values as a dictionary that means this method maps attribute names and their values as dictionary see dictionary is a key value pair so name of the attribute becomes the key and its value becomes the value okay it becomes key value pair like this like this for example for the point class defined earlier use the elements point of 3 comma 4 okay what are these 3 comma 4 x and y coordinates okay so where's of p no p is what p is, a, p is the object where's of p so output is it will display it in dictionary format so we have two coordinates x and y okay x value is 3 and y value is 4 students we know the property of dictionary so the sequence of insertion is not same as sequence of display while displaying the values the sequence may vary why because dictionary internally will make use of linked list dictionary it will use linked list concept to store its elements hence the displaying sequence may vary see here the first element is 3 which represents x coordinate okay and this is second element is y coordinate okay but while displaying first it, it is displaying y and first it next it is displaying x but what is important when you use where's it will convert it into dictionary and it will display it will convert all the attributes into dictionary format the purpose of where's is to convert attributes into the dictionary and to display its value value of the di dictionary say for example you, uh, you want to display all the attributes okay so for that you are calling you are calling one function one user defined function print attributes of object okay for attributes in where's of object okay in where's of object so in each iteration you print name of the attribute then comma its value so this will get attribute value this will get attribute will print its value okay this pr this prints name of the attribute and this prints attribute value after that it's just an overview of oops concepts so we have seen so many object oriented languages like c++ java python okay see so basically python is a general purpose programming language and if you have if you want to model the real time problems then you can make it as object oriented okay so that means python also supports for object orientation so therefore python is also an object oriented programming languages language just like php c++ net java and other languages this is also an oop language and look at uh, just let us see what are the elements of object oriented programming the object pro oriented programming supports some of the basic concepts like as building blocks every oops language normally supports and develop around these features these are discussed that is first concept is class look at the basic definition a class is a user defined data type binds data and functions together into a single entity so when we write a class basically what we are doing first we declare a class then we define data members and member functions then we put it within the class so where we define the definitions within the function isn't it in python within the within the function okay so first we declare the class then we write the definitions okay then within the main code we we create the objects okay so therefore it's user defined data type which binds data and functions together into a single entity so this concept is called as data binding also 
the process of binding together data and functions is called as data binding and that will be supported by class look at here how it will bind so this is the example of binding see this is the class diagram here this is the class name and th these are all the attributes attributes are nothing but the characteristics characteristics of an entity if you consider human being as an entity its characteristics are hair color okay see normally uh, indians means black hairs okay so if you consider see geographical wise geography wise say if we consider like people of england okay so their hair color is different from ours okay then other attributes of a human being number of legs number of eyes skin color gender and so on then functionality walking talking and eating so just for example okay just for example sake they have considered these three as operations or functionalities okay so in this class we are binding data and functions together and we are calling it as a class friends that is the concept of class second is object an object is an instance of class okay as class is just a prototype representing a new data type to use this new data type we need to create a variable of this type such a variable is known as object okay so actually class means directly we cannot use to perform operations if you want to perform operations you you need to create an instance of your class and we call that instance as an object okay so one class is collection of so many instances so depending upon our purpose we decide how many instances are required for our class say for example if i want to store the information of 10 human beings then i may create 10 instances of human being then i call them as 10 objects of type human being so how to create a class so human be uh, sorry object name is equal to human being and open and close the bracket okay for example so h1 is equal to human being okay now i am creating one object h1 of type human being so like this we can create the objects and always an object is an real world entity real world entity see students remember we can use object oriented programming language only to deal with real time objects so that's why an object is an real time entity okay you should not forget that one now look at here now what is the properties of objects property or attribute both are one and the same here skin is the skin color is the attribute hair is the attribute number of eyes number of legs and objects one is ramu for ramu object skin color is whitish hair color is gray number of legs two eyes two for radha skin color is fair color hair color is black and legs and eyes are two in number okay so now ramu and radha represents objects and skin color hair legs and eyes represents attributes or the properties see data encapsulation is nothing but data binding okay the process of binding data and code together into a single entity is called encapsulation the process of binding data okay so this is the data binding data and the code code means functionality to implement each of the functionality you will be writing some piece of code so binding data and code together into a single entity is called as an encapsulation okay code means the logic behind each functionality is called as the code okay that is called encapsulation then data abstraction data abstraction means 
hiding the implementation details from the end user. See the end user, so you'll be seeing the main method, isn't it? See the main method. See, look at here, I'll show you the main method. See, from here it is the main method. See here in the main method, you'll get only some abstract information, isn't it? Okay, you don't get, say for example, T1 is equal to T2, that you are seeing. From this, you, you will understand that you have written one method where you can compare two objects T1 and T2. But just by seeing the main method, okay, you will not get any information about the implementation. Okay, that feature is called as data hiding. That feature is called as data hiding. That is hiding the implementation details and displaying only the necessary part that is called only the essential part that is called as data hiding or information hiding so that is one way of implementing data abstraction students when we do project how to achieve data abstraction so let us con uh, consider one example So you will you'll import one class in another class. Say for example, you will import class 1 in class 2. That means by using the import keyword. Then there you will call the method of class 1. So, in, so in the inside the class 1, just you are making a call to method of class 1. That means you are hiding the implementation details of that method in class 2. The person who opens the class 2, you will just see the method method name but not the implementation but because that implementation is in some other class that is in class one okay that is called that is one example for data abstraction okay once again i repeat one example for implementing data abstraction so first i'll create class one inside that i'll define n number of methods say for example one of the method is um, say underscore add underscore so i am making an attempt to add two objects so the logic to add two two objects is being written in class one now what i'll do later i'll create cl class two inside the class two i'll import class one okay then i'll call add method double underscore add double underscore now if when i open the class two just i'll see the name of the method but not its implementation because that impl that's implementation is there in the class one that we are hiding. So this concept is called as data abstraction. So in class two, we are just displaying only, only what is essential. So name of the, you need to perform addition of two objects. So hence you are uh, using that syntax, but the logic is defined in some other class that is data abstraction. Next inheritance. So I need not tell anything about inheritance. Inheritance is a concept from which where the child classes will inherit the uh, properties from the parent class. See here, rep reptile is inheriting features from the animal and mammal is also inheriting some of the features from animal. See when I say animal, so what are the attributes? What are the attributes of an animal? Students tell me. See every animal will have head, every animal will have eyes, Every animal will have legs, hands. So those are the some of the properties which will be inherited both by reptile and mammal. Then, so when I say mammal, human is also a mammal. Okay, cat is one, I one more example. Because they will not lay eggs, isn't it? Okay, so therefore, so this will inherit some of the features or all the features from mammal. Okay, so similarly the dog is inheriting features from mammal. So from dog, we have Doberman, okay, it's a particular type of dog and we have German Shepherd, it's a particular variant of dog. So this is inheriting some of the properties from the main class dog. Okay, so like this inheritance will work. And under inheritance, we know that there are so many techniques like single level inheritance, multi-level inheritance, multiple inheritance and so on. Okay, uh, hierarchical inheritance hybrid inheritance and so on then ultimately we have polymorphism 
okay so this can be thought of as an interface multiple methods say for example when you write multiple imp implementations of the same method then it becomes function overloading so function overloading and upper operator overloading both are part of polymorphism okay both are part of polymorphism look at your example m3 is equal to m1 plus m2 so this is also polymorphism okay this is also polymorphism see why it is polymorphism see the same operator you are overloading to add two matrices matrix m1 and matrix m2 and here you are using plus operator to add two strings s1 is one string s2 is another string okay so this is called so using same operator to do different things this is addition of matrices and here this is addition of strings this is called as polymorphism using same method to do okay different tasks under different circumstances so here i am dealing with matrices hence i am uh, using this operator to perform addition between two matrices and here i am dealing with the strings i want to add two strings that is i am using it for string concatenation where s1 and s2 are not normal variables instead they are the objects they are the string objects they are the objects of string type look at here look at here how i am calling them oh, okay students that's all for today's class tomorrow we'll see either tomorrow we should start with uh, creating the gui or we have to start with files concepts already to some extent we have finished the files very little bit concepts are pending we'll see whether to start with uh, files or to start with creating guis huh? i'll take that and